What's up everybody? Russ here, rwgresearch.com, quantumgravityresearch.org. So check it out. Today I am currently uh, doing some testing with the printing and uh, on my 3D printer. And so you saw the high-res 3D printer which printed out a part that looked like this. Here is a slice that I stopped of a 3D print. Uh, I just started cleaning it on this end down here so it's not clean yet. But I printed this on my printer with my own homemade filament. And uh, honestly, it's really not bad. You can see I didn't clean anything over here yet. I'm trying to uh, start cleaning that and actually looks it looks really good. It's it's nothing to complain about for the quality or the the printer that I'm using. So um, one of the things that I want to share with you today though about the printer, which is what this video is about, um, is the fact that the environment that it's around has to be warm for the print to stay level and flat when you're printing ABS. So it's almost better to enclose this whole thing um, and let the entire print area be filled up with a constant temperature of air so that there's not a cool air. Now right now it's currently very cold in here. It's actually like my fingers are cold. I've been down here in the lab and my fingers are cold. So it's chilly. Uh, the bed actually has a hard time heating up. And you can probably see in the background that there's a light flashing on and on. I'll show you what that is in a minute. I came up with a solution, uh, but I didn't want something to happen. I didn't want this to happen. Take a look. Alrighty, well, yeah, we uh, we were printing the parts off overnight, and uh, apparently they've curled, and they've uh, not cooled evenly, so therefore they've uh, well, each individual layer has pulled up against the last layer and has bowed them. So we're going to head down now and have a look and see just how bad they really look. Now, this is the short way. And here I was walking around a long way each time. Like I said, oh snap! Really bad. That is bad. But the other two are okay, aren't they? Yeah. All right. Well, I don't think that's going to work well as the rotor housing. What do you all think? Well, I suppose we'll give it another go and uh, see how we go from there. Uh, yeah, so I didn't want that to happen, but the idea was good, using a heat lamp to keep the environment warm without encasing the entire uh, apparatus in a closed chamber of some kind. One reason I don't want to do that is because a lot of my uh, parts are actually made of printed material. So, for instance, the entire apparatus that's holding this together is printed parts. These arms are printed parts. These arms down here are printed. These are printed. So the problem is, is that if I heat this entire chamber, then I'm going to run into an issue where everything inside the chamber is going to be at the, at the temperature of the plastic and since this is ABS and this is ABS then that's going to get soft. This stuff's going to get soft. We don't want that. Um, so I thought if I could just concentrate the heat in the right spot with some sort of heat lamp which is uh, what I saw in that video that you just saw and um, do it in such a way that it's automatic so that it's kind of self-regulating then I think I'd be better off. So here's what I did. Um, you can see that there's 12 volts connected to the board here, which is a heating element. So what I did is I just took those wires right over here to a with a solid state relay. There you can see the information on it. That's a solid state relay. You can put in 3 to 30 volts DC, and you can run an AC load on the other side. So what I did is I just got myself a standard plug and a standard piece of uh, extension cord wire and I ran, ran it through this as a switch. 
and ran that to a standard electrical outlet. Now I will want to put this in a box if I think that this is going to work well because this is very dangerous having a current AC current just out in the open like this. But you get the idea. Then I plugged the lamp into that and you could wire this into this cord if you wanted to. I just didn't think my cord was long enough. I could just splice this wire. I didn't want to ruin this lamp. So the lamp cord comes up here to the lamp and voila when the heating bed is on the lamp is on. And what that allows me to do is temperature regulate this area, just this focused area of where the heat lamp is pointed. And it does definitely put out some good amount of heat. And, you know, without encasing this entire thing and making all the parts soft or having other issues, this was the simple solution. Um, so yeah, so it works. Uh, using a solid state relay, you could use a regular relay, but I found the solid state relay in my box of relays over there in my awesome inventory that I have found in objects I've taken apart and thought what's the easiest way to interface this thing and thought well heck I got power connections right there I'll just clamp some leads on there and I'm off uh, obviously you would want to wire this differently if you use this um, as a permanent solution but the thing is is it works really well so I hope that makes sense to you I hope it helps you and um, maybe if you're having a same problems where the layers um, are splitting apart because you're laying hot plastic on a cold plastic layer and then it wants to peel apart and so it only makes sense so this is a uh, an alternative that thus far seems to work well I have not tested this on big objects which is most of the time where the problem is is on the big objects um, but you can only try and see what happens so that's it Russ out Hope this helps you guys in the 3D printing world. Yeah. Printing fairly slow. But it prints out well. That thing definitely puts some heat out. That's for sure. I can heat the heat bed up a lot better. Alright. And I don't know. You can see it's flickering. No idea. I think it's... Uh, th the thing is, is this is pulse width modulated and that is seeing the pulse width modulation and I think that's why it's flickering. Maybe you could put a capacitor across the input to, um, to help that, but I'm not so concerned because it seems to function pretty well. We'll see how long that light, light bulb lasts coming on and off all the time. In case you're wondering, um, this bulb is a... It does not say. I do not know. It's just a standard heat lamp. It's probably 200, 300 watt maybe. I don't think it's a 500 watt. All right, hope this helps. See ya. Check out the rest of my stuff on my webpage if you would like to know more about this 3D printer. rwgresearch.com. Look up Delta 3D printer in the projects section. See ya.